Did you know approximately 264 billion cigarettes were sold just last year here in the U.S.? That's a lot. That's enough to fill up the entire Empire State Building two and a half times. Adults with a mental illness smoke almost one third of all of those cigarettes. And back with tips to change this trend is Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, the Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. Welcome back. And this is, this is such an important issue. Here in the United States, smoking is one of the reasons that people with chronic mental illnesses die up to 25 years earlier than the general population. They have a smoking rate that is 65% higher than those without mental illnesses. And as a result, their smoking is triggering life-threatening illnesses like heart disease, lung cancer, and even diabetes. Well, one in five people in the U.S. here live with chronic mental illness, depression, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder are commonly known ones, but anxiety, eating disorders, panic attacks, even post-traumatic stress syndrome are all types of mental illness. And misconceptions about mental illness may be a barrier to getting effective treatment to stop smoking. So let's talk a little bit about some of the myths that surround mental illness and smoking. Here's a big one. Myth number one, smokers with mental illness may not want to quit smoking. How many of you think that's true? This is a common myth, um, but it is a myth. Uh, research tell us that people with mental illnesses who smoke are just as interested in quitting as all other smokers. Now the problem is that smoking cessation is often not a part of their treatment plan. That's because they're not asked if they smoke or if they're interested in quitting. And myth number two is this, smokers with mental illness can't quit smoking. Absolutely a myth. So research tells us that with a treatment plan that's developed, that's aligned with their willingness to quit and continued follow-up care for treatment, that people with mental illnesses who smoke are able to successfully quit. Treating tobacco dependence is challenging for all smokers, no matter who you are. Nicotine addiction, it's tough to beat, but one of our viewers is ready to give it a try. I've been smoking off and on for about I would say 10 years. About six months ago, I was diagnosed with anxiety. And of course, I'm smoking to help ease that, but it's not helping. And I want a healthier life. And I need to know what to do. And this is important. Whether or not you live with a mental illness, quitting smoking, one of the best things you can do for yourself. So here's some motivation. When you stop smoking, your body's physiology immediately starts improving. Your heart rate and blood pressure may start to normalize. Carbon monoxide levels in the blood begin to decline. Within just a few weeks, your body's circulatory system starts improving. Many people with mental illnesses report positive changes in their mental status after they've quit smoking as well. So talk to your healthcare team about developing a quit plan. Tell them about all of your attempts to quit in the past, what worked for you, what didn't work for you. And then set a quit date with that healthcare team and make sure to ask them if there are any treatments that are available that might be effective for you. Focus on the benefits of change and the risks associated with smoking. Adding counseling or support to any treatment recommended by your doctor can certainly increase your odds of quitting for good, which is ultimately the goal. And I wanna end with some good news. Last year, right, the rate or the percentage of adult smokers dramatically decreased. That is a life-saving trend. Amen. So we need to keep that trend going. And in order to do so, you can go to gethealthystayhealthy.com and there's information there where you can learn how to develop a quit plan. And of course, while you're there, you can sign up for a newsletter and get health information sent directly to you. Dr. Frida, thank you so very much. Always a pleasure. More to come, stick around.